Welcome to the Palm Print Living Room Conversation Series. So today we have with us Chinelo Abranta, the author of Happiness Like Water. Um, so first I want to really thank you for joining us, you know, being here with us in the living room. And we have, um, you know, in the room with us, our guest for today who will join us in having yeah, a little bit of conversation about the, the book and the issues that come up in the book. Uh, again, the aim of, of the Living Room Conversation Series is really to uh, facilitate, use books to facilitate conversations about issues that African authors uh, bring up, feel are important enough to bring up in their, in their books. So uh, thank you for writing this book. Um, I think in one of the emails I, I sent to you, I said that one of the things I like about this book is that there are a lot of things in it that a lot of people or most people don't really want to talk about. Right. Well, thank you for having me, and also thank you everyone for being here. It's really nice to see all of you interested in something that I've written, which is really surprising and wonderful. In a, it's surprising in a good way. As I mentioned, you're not here to entertain us, so I'm not going to ask you to read. Um, at any point, if you, you know, if you feel like it and you want to just point to the book, yeah, it's up to you. You know, you do whatever you want. Uh, so, but I'm going to ask um, one of our guests to read something, um, a passage that struck her in a way. Okay, so this passage is from the story Runs Girl. Um, this story really hit home for me, it, it brought up a lot of issues, um, mainly because the prime, the premier character in this story, her mom was sick, she was going through a couple of health issues, and she was trying to find a way to help her mom. And so this is the passage that struck out to me. I would do it just that one night to get the money for mama, to get the money so that I could take her to a specialist, one that Najika would recommend. I knew that mama would ask where the money had come from. I tell her that I had taken up a short-term job. It would be the truth. She probably asked more questions. What kind of job? How did you find it? I'd figure out answers for those questions later, I thought. Najika did my makeup just as, soon, just as she had that first afternoon. Then she lent me a red wraparound dress, a little too tight on her, she said, but just my size. It formed a V around my neck. I'd never before given any thought to my collarbone. But in the mirror that evening, I thought what a beautiful thing the collarbone was and I thought how terrible that mamas were so damaged. And the reason why that particular um, passage struck out to me is that it was the first time that she actually looked at her body and liked what she saw. And to me, it was ironic because it was right before she sold her body to someone else. It was the first time she loved herself. And that brought up the, the issue of self-image in black women and how we kind of use it um, not, for, not to see the love in ourselves, but to show someone else love and I just want, want to know what was your thought behind this character so first of all thank you so much for picking up that pa passage it's, uh, mm -hmm. it, it even touches me as I, as I hear it um, first I wrote that story um, after a trip to Nigeria where we were in Potakot and um, my aunt had actually just suffered a stroke so mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time in and out um, of the University of Potakot Hospital, the University Teaching Hospital. Um, so, but in any case, in writing that that story, that character, um, you know, I was just writing a, a, a character of. I put myself in a situation of, you know, a, a child who my aunt is in the in the position to help whatever way she can, right. because you know, family circumstances put us in situations where sometimes, you know, we have to help our family and we have to do whatever it is we can to help sometimes it involves you know making right. uh, sacrifices that people will everybody has judgments these days you know mm -hmm. some people will say you know what were you thinking you know um but 
at the end of the day, we've made our decision, and so that's really what the story is about, and then maybe how we live with it. And I mean, just the idea of self-image right. is really important, and I like that you bring that that you bring that up because I think it even extends to the image of an entire nation. Absolutely, you know yeah. the way that we are sometimes afraid to look at ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, to see who we are because what you see might not be what you want to see. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, picking up from that, one of the, or at least when I, when I look at all, all our uh, 10 stories, right, um, one thing that I notice is that in many of them, someone is either speaking for the woman, or, you know, the central uh, character, or even if someone is not speaking for that person, and let's say they're speaking for themselves, there's this feeling of um, defenseless against you know, the circumstances in which they find, you know, them, uh, they find themselves in. Um, can you maybe talk a little bit about um, you know, why you, you saw these issues as so important to deal with them in the way that, that, that you dealt with them? Yeah. Um. Well, that's a really good question as well. Um, I think the one thing I want to say, since we're you know early on in the beginning of all of this, is that I think a lot of times African writers are put in the position of, oh, you're speaking for the entire country. You know, like being the put in the in the position of like if you write something, then yeah. like you are the spokesperson for whatever and whatever topic it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I am by no means a spokesperson. And so what I want to say is that like more than anything, this book is a personal journey. Yeah. Okay. It so happens that it speaks, you know, to many things yeah. that happen in a country and it speaks to, you know, women's issues, it speaks to things like domestic violence, it speaks to, you know, what's going on with the LGBTQ community in Nigeria today. It speaks to all of that. Yeah. It is fiction, but it's from a personal space. And yeah. so, um, I guess when I when you ask the question about you know the defenselessness and the voicelessness, it was a period in my life where I was frustrated by certain things and I was opening my eyes and I was seeing you know voiceless women you know women whose voices were being taken away from them or even the opening story on the yeah. Street. Um, her entire story is being told by, by her husband. husband yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. Even as he, his intention is to empower her, yeah. um, he's empowering her in a way that still denies her of her own voice. Yeah. And so, um, you know, more than anything, this is just a collection written by a woman <laughs> <laughs> that seeks to empower other women. And though the stories are harsh, yeah. you know, they are, you know, in your face kind of stories, but it's all empowerment because I am myself a woman. And that's the beauty of, you know, these kind of things is that at least we, we seize back our voices when we write our own stories. Yeah.